Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of the overall markets, get into the commodities, see what they're doing, and I'll give you my financial opinion. Uh, we'll start with the dollar here, so let's dive right in. Uh, we got the dollar here, it looks like we're coming up into a rising wedge. Uh, we're getting a little overthrow top, and is this the top of the dollar? Again, um, I'm not gonna say it is or isn't, but it sure looks a little bit weak here, like we could in the very short term uh, head a little bit lower. Depends what the market wants to do. Uh, the, the dollar's been very resilient. We do have a rising wedge that is squeezing up a little bit. We get this throw over top, and sometimes these guys like to fall back over. Again, short term probability and statistics, it's about a 60% uh, probability if you're really good at. Uh, charting this stuff out. Uh, we have had a rising wedge here that broke to the upside. Uh, so it doesn't mean necessarily that the rising wedge will break down, but probability wise, they usually break to the downside. Uh, and if this is a throw over top, or if this is just a breakout with a retracement uh, where we could potentially go higher, that's also a possibility. Now, the 10 year yield's been rocketing higher. We've got a nice, good, strong day today up 3%, we're at 3.101 uh, on the yield. We've got this strong uh, resistance line in the white here going across. Uh, we played with it before. Uh, we, we broke out, kind of came back down below it. Now we're starting to, to move and break that resistance line again. Uh, and that's right where we're at is on that resistance line. Higher yields uh, are signaling to the markets, at least the 10 year yield, that inflation could be a problem. And that's why the interest rates are going up. Uh, it's in a real negative rate. Now, it doesn't do that just straight higher. You can see these pullbacks that we get. Uh, but right now, we are in a strong impulse move higher at this moment. And we'll see if that continues. Uh, the CRB index has been moving higher with those yields. Uh, usually, there's a good correlation between higher yields and inflation and higher commodity prices when the inflation's in the system we start to slow down on the movements of the yields uh, that's when usually gold and silver take off platinum's usually one of the leaders there it's it's more inflation sensitive and when looking at the precious metals gold's up a little bit but basically flat silver is basically flat and Platinum was up today. Palladium was up a lot today as well. Uh, there's also underlying fundamental supply demand imbalances in palladium right now. And I would say since platinum is a substitute for palladium, that palladium's imbalances are also the imbalances of platinum. So we'll probably see these things move together to some degree. And platinum looks like it's trying to put in a bottom here and head higher. It looks good. Uh, XEU to gold ratio, we're still in that downtrend, a little bit more of selling pressure within the um, ETFs. Uh, it's not very large selling pressure, just a little bit, where gold outperformed the gold and silver mining companies. Uh, GDX was down slightly. Uh, again, I don't see any clear reversal pattern here yet. Uh, and then SILJ also had a little small down day to day, about a uh, percent down right on support. Uh, that support line going across is this guy here going across. So we've used it as support and resistance multiple times uh, throughout the trading. And it can be a little bit of a range. You know, it could be somewhere in this vicinity all through here as we've gotten lots of buying and selling pressure in this resistance support zone. Uh, the ultimate bottom here is where the blue line is. Moving on to uh, crude oil. Crude oil was up 2% today. Uh, it is looking good. It finished quite strong. That's good. We're still next to uh, this fat down candlestick of what, which confuses a lot of people because we don't know why it went down that much with no news. Uh, but we do have some uh, buying pressure today. We have a bullish engulfing the day before. That looks good. And hopefully the buying pressure can continue if you're a bull in oil. Uh, fundamentals haven't been changed. It still looks good. Uh, we've got a bloody nose on natural gas here. Uh, what that is is you get a large candlestick with a little down day next to it. Uh, that usually means that we 
could potentially go higher uh, on natural gas in the short term over the next few days or week. And that's where we're at there. XOP, yeah, you know me. Uh, this full decline pullback was about 37%. Uh, we had a couple of other pretty big pullbacks, 46%, 28 and 22 uh, as, and this is all since 2020. We've had some pretty big pullbacks. There's a couple others in there. Uh, and this one seems to be a larger pullback that we're getting. Uh, it's nothing out of the norm and it's not a trend ending pullback, I don't think. Is this pullback done? Difficult to say, guys. It is difficult to say. We've got lots of cross currents in this market. Um, but the good thing that I see is an increasing 10 year yield. That means that the bond market thinks that inflation is still a problem. Uh, inflation is heavily linked to the 10 year yield going up, and so is oil. And, and I think these will all stay correlated. I think oil will go higher. I think the 10 year yield will go higher. And I think they're going to continue to raise rates uh, because inflation uh, is perceived to be a problem. Uh, coming on down, the energy service sector was up a little bit today. Again, you know, I think we've got a little bit more uh, of knocking it out sideways for a little bit before we had higher. Uh, but again, that's speculation. Uh, we are uh, 36 below off, off its high. Uh, was the bottom we've come up a little bit but this general vicinity i think is good if you guys like these uh stocks uh to be looking at least to be looking uh and it's up to you on what you want to do i can't give advice but uh you know it's it's always best to be looking at something that's greater than a 30 percent pullback you would have been good uh to be buying at these pullbacks in these general uh vicinities uh, below 30% would have been a very good time. You didn't get 30% here, but you got another one to be looking if it's in a long-term bull market, which I believe it is. Uh, coming on down to uh, uranium, uh, we're going to look at URNM. Well, the futures prices are basically, it's 47.65. It was down a little bit. The Sprott Physical Uranium Trust was up today, little wick at the top and bottom. Uh, basically a momentum sideways day. URNM, an ETF uh, bouncing off support down here, looks looking like it's trying to get some, some momentum going. It is on low volume. I wish the volume was a little bit more. I wish we could, uh, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish, yeah, I know, ski low, huh? But um, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish it finished a lot stronger and a little bit more volume. It would be a little more indicative of, a bottoming type move, but we haven't had it yet. Uh, scrolling on down, uh, TAN continues to go higher. The Invesco Solar ETF, again, this still looks good to me to, to rip it here. Uh, that looks really good. If you guys aren't looking at TAN, uh, you know, I don't really own that much in it. I don't know the long term fundamentals, but in terms of, I don't know how viable solar is with an increasing commodity base. And an energy crisis. I know that seems counterintuitive, uh, but the in co input costs for solar, uh, one of the largest input costs is energy itself, and then all the commodities. And all the commodities are very energy intensive to get out of the ground. So, on a low energy returning substance, <laughs> uh, your costs can go up dramatically in an energy crisis. But technically, looking at this chart, it looks really good to, to try to do something here. Uh, but that's what I see there. Uh, looking at COPX, this is a copper ETF. We're still uh, hanging out above that support uh, line. Uh, going to the dailies, you can see we bounced off of it. And we've come up, and I think we're going to do a little bit of sideways action. Uh, we've got a lot of momentum coming down here. This is a lot of momentum coming down. So we'll see uh, where that goes. Coming on down, CRB to S&P 500. Looks like we're heading higher there today. Uh, that's looking a little bit better. Uh, platinum was destroying gold uh, earlier. We could, we saw that uh, the ratio is moving in a positive way for platinum, uh, but palladium is absolutely on fire. Uh, it was up a, a big amount today, and obviously the ratio went down there. Platinum against silver has gone up. Uh, this to me looks like we're breaking out to the upside here. Uh, that looks very positive for platinum. Uh, I am very much a platinum bull. Anyone who's been on the channel knows. I've, I'm a huge physical platinum guy, and there it is. That's that's why I like these ratios. I think that 
in the beginning of this bull market, platinum will outperform silver. That's my take on it. And if we get to a level that's up here, uh, all you did was you bought a whole bunch of silver uh, for much cheaper buying platinum and then converting it at a 1 to 50 or 1 to 40 uh, ratio, which means uh, if, if, if I were to do some math, uh, let's say you can buy platinum right now for, and this has been over the past few days, uh, I'm just going to choose a number 950. Uh, if you bought it for 950 one ounce and you can convert it to 140 ounces, so it'd be uh, $950 divided by 140 ounces eventually, you'd be basically buying silver for $6.78 uh, if you can convert at a 1 to 40 ratio. There might be some frictional costs associated with it. Maybe it's a hair more than that. Uh, but the deals down here, um, when I'm buying platinum, I think are going to be incredible. And then you can transfer into silver if it were to get back to this ratio. Uh, notice last bull market, the beginning of that bull market in 2000, we had a nice big run all the way to about 140 um, ounces here where you could swap out or swap out here. You had two opportunities there at about 140, 150 um, one ounce to 140, 150 ounces. Uh, and that was at the beginning of the last bull market. I'm hoping that platinum breaking out of this falling wedge can outperform silver dramatically. And you get that same opportunity where I can load up and swap into uh, another metal if the ratio uh, exists. Uh, so that, there's that if it exists at a, at a point, you know, opportunity of 140 to 150. Uh, coming on down, uh, looking at the gold to oil or gold to silver ratios up there. That's at 90. Uh, looking at the Dow Jones to gold ratio, we are moving sideways in that, uh, basically at this resistance line right now. But it, it's it's been bouncing in this megaphone pattern back and forth uh, for that ratio. Uh, coming on down, see what else is out there. Uh, Rare Earths. This is REMX ETF. We've got a wedge that is basically coming to a point that i think is going to break at some point to the to the upside it looks like it's a little bit of a falling wedge that could be bullish here but we got to see the break uh lithium uh lithium looks like it's trying to put something together where we could potentially break this little uh downtrend line and move on higher uh we broke in the first downtrend line here did a little bit of dillying and dallying uh, around and now we're trying to break this other trend line so Lithium's starting to look a little bit better, and we're starting to see some of these stocks uh, get some life in it. Uh, the S S P the S and P 500 is still in a downtrend. We got a break, uh, but looking at the U.S. Composite Index, that has broken to the upside, so that's positive. Uh, we could see things start to turn around here, hopefully. Uh, again, this is what I look for. I look for downtrend breaks, and then I look for a potential move higher. I usually break or buy off of a trend line break. Uh, out of a pattern break uh, it usually does a retest sometimes where this thing breaks and then it comes back and retests and then we go uh, and then i look for um coming back down and buying off of large support levels uh, if you guys are interested in figuring that stuff out definitely check the description link below uh, to see what companies i'm buying why i'm buying it where i'm buying it in terms of support resistance levels uh, and I usually do uh, an update on Sunday and on Wednesday uh, midweek. Uh, it's been a little bit crazy uh, recently, only because I've been traveling a little bit here, uh, but I, I'm still kicking stuff out so you guys can see uh, updates there. Uh, so if, you, if you're interested in that, join the Platinum membership in the description link below on the website. Uh, you get all these things uh, going on real time. Uh, lumber down a little bit today, right on that support resistance line, uh, but we've had a nice good uh, rocket higher here. Uh, I know everybody likes to use lumber for some reason. Oh, it's in a bear market. Oh, it's in a bull market. Oh, it's in a bear market. Guys, this is just normal volatility, which is incredibly volatile. Uh, we are in a bull market. That's why this entire price level is elevated in relationship to the history of lumber. Uh, lumber was, you know, average was here, and then it was a little bit higher average, and now we're way up here, the average. Uh, that's just higher costs uh, coming through. Uh, palladium, like I said, was killing it today. Big ol', uh, that's a monthly candlestick there. The dailies, big ol' uh, move higher here. Uh, the majority of palladium gets produced and, and mined in Russia. And remember, palladium shortages 
is platinum shortages. Uh, so I, I, I like platinum more than palladium at this time. But that's just me. Uh, coming on down, let's see what else we've got. I'm not going to go over. I think somebody was talking about wheat. Uh, wheat was was bouncing back here. Uh, again, guys, sometimes you're going to, you know, when you get these huge moves, you're going to get these these uh, consolidation phases afterwards. It doesn't mean that we're necessarily completely done yet. Uh, maybe we are. I don't think so. I think this is basically kind of like if, if you were to look at last bull market, um, 98, 99, 2000, this was kind of the bottom here. And we kind of went sideways. We have the double hump. You come up, and then we broke and did a, and did a peak up in 2008. Uh, this wasn't necessarily a huge energy crisis. It was more liquidity driven, in my opinion, at least. Now we're at the beginning of a bull market, which happened in 2020, but we've got a large first leg move. And then I think it'll pull back, and then we'll, I think we're going to get another large move out of this uh, in the future. Uh, but again, my expertise isn't necessarily in these soft commodities. I like more of the the metals and energy market. But um, soybeans is up there. It's pulled back off its recent highs. Uh, here's your kind of pullback here. Not too much to say there. Uh, we've got corn that also had a gap down. I think there was obviously someone produced something. Uh, somewhere in the world to relieve the supply demand uh, imbalance. Copper is still struggling a little bit. Uh, we've got a large momentum pullback. I think we got to go sideways a little bit before uh, trying to put in a bottoming type pattern. Uh, we also had support basically right where it's at. Looking back on this side, there's our support area. So is this a pause point before we go lower or is this a pause point before we go higher? Uh, very good question. We'll find out here over the next weeks, months. Uh, the Baltic Dry Index, we can do that here last. Looking at a weekly candlestick, we've been pulling back. Uh, lots of fear on the markets. Uh, looks like this hasn't been the uh, the safety area, but most, most everything hasn't been the safety area. It's been a sell uh, everything type of event. But, um, you know, looking at all this stuff, I'm still kind of just sitting on the sidelines with some cash, building it up uh, in the short term. Again, I deployed it a little while back in uranium. And I'm sitting here waiting, waiting to see what, what goes down. I'm still a huge bull in oil uh, and energy in general. That's kind of my most conviction area. Energy service areas, you know, energy service companies are also another area that I think will do very well. So energy is i think the leader of this crisis i think they're trying to raise rates to tame inflation which is coming from oil and energy and it's supply driven i don't know how they're going to fix that with with rising interest rates or raising interest rates um what i think they're going to get is some weird byproduct of some sort that of unintended uh consequences uh, and potentially even people defaulting on loans at some point uh out there in the future but we'll find we'll find out we'll see uh, so I'm I'm I like energy quite a bit. That's where I'm at. Uh, if you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and uh, we'll catch you next time. This is finding value.